the stupid things I say and do and never really stop when I should never have begun. I really ought to drop it, but it's faster when you don't even have time to stop and think about the things that you were saying, cause they never really matter. But it's empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. I don't know, I don't know. All the million little empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. I don't know. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Keep It Vegan. My name's Ben, the AVD, that's Angry Vegan for those of you who haven't been blessed with my presence before. Um, and today, uh, I just want to take a quick look at uh, an article that came my way recently, um, and I'll explain how I came onto it um, in a little bit. Um, I'm working on about four videos at the moment, and I can only be able to do probably one and a half. So uh, here's the half, and uh, we'll figure out the other two later. Uh, so this uh, article, as you can see before you, uh, it's on the Independent, part of their Pulse section. Uh, Orthorexia nervosa, obsessive clean eating in prison sufferers and endangers health, psychologist says. It can have a debilitating effect on your life. Um, so it can be difficult to discern. A psychologist says this seems to be an article predominantly uh, from in regards to something this nutritionist down here has said, but we'll, uh, we'll come on to that. It's, uh, it's not particularly well put together. Uh, so, a psychologist has spoken out about the harmful side effects of obsessively following clean eating. To eat clean is largely considered issuing gluten. No, it's not. Refined sugar, obviously. Dairy and all animal products. And processed foods. Wow, it sounds like a lot of things to be cutting out of your diet if you put two ands in a short list. Some clean eaters eat a wholly raw vegan diet. Oh, we got some lovely adverts here as well. Uh, when an interest in healthy eating becomes an obsession, it turns into orthorexia. It can have a debilitating effect on a person's life. So what they're talking about here is orthorexia nervosa is a uh, moderately new... Uh, I suppose eating disorder, although it's described more as a phobia. Um wherein a person basically um, causes themselves physical or social harm because of the rules they place on themselves for eating. Um, the article here mentions it was it was first coined in 1990 by Steve Bratman, a San Francisco-based physician, uh, and has been increasing in incidence in recent years and has been linked to the rise of clean eating. However, in 2015, um, uh, Bratman himself uh, actually responded. Uh, a increasing number of um, news articles were referring to non-mainstream diets as orthorexia. They were throwing around the term orthorexia nervosa. Um, and Bratman himself specified, saying that a theory may be conventional or unconventional, extreme or lax, sensible or totally wacky. But regardless of the details, followers of the theory do not necessarily have orthorexia. They are simply... Adherence of a dietary theory. The term orthorexia only applies when an eating disorder develops around that theory. Um, so that's the important thing I want to throw out there first off. This is this mentioning orthorexia, but this by his own uh, his own coinage, I suppose you could call it. Um, the, we're talking about a very specific minority, and in fact, the turn, the times in which orthorexia is um, is the correct or could be considered the correct diagnosis, there are very specific uh, parameters that have to be met. Um, basically, you have to be seeing malnutrition in a subject, uh, severe weight loss or other medical complications, um, social or uh, vocational problems, basically um, a severe impairment of their social ability or, or uh, kind of distress as a person because of their beliefs, um, or something that their body image or their, their sense of self-worth or their identity hinging solely upon or uh, needing to be compliant with this, this self-defined healthy eating behavior. So we're talking about people who basically impose rules on themselves and it, it causes severe problems. Now, straight off the bat there's there's a very open-ended um capacity for basically taking over that that notion and, and kind of applying it to your own means it's very easy to describe someone who follows a vegan diet as someone who has orthorexia um looking at kind of these simple requirements um largely because yeah a lot of vegans do suffer um 
doesn't always go up as high as bullying in the workplace, but they can, they do receive, you know, grief from their friends and it can be very problematic in their families and cause arguments. Some f- people lose friends because of it. Um, and uh, if you don't fully understand nutrition or how your body works or how food works, then you can easily be looking at it and, and calling it malnutrition as well. So it's very easy to apply that description. Absolutely. Uh, it's just wrong to do so. And this article then goes on and mentions um, quite possibly the uh, the nutritionist mentioned in the title, but it's not exactly clear. Uh, Sophie Ortega uh, found in a client they had a vitamin B12 deficiency, um, and this is an example of uh, this is an example of orthorexia. Uh, B12 is mainly found in eggs, dairy products, meat, and fish. So many strict vegans struggle to consume enough without taking supplements. It was as if she preferred to lose her sight rather than betray her commitment to animals. Ortega said, um, and it kind of goes on to talk about how it's not fully medically recognised and and all that bullshit. So. And I'll come on to why I'm talking about this article, because you, you've probably noticed it's a bit of a shit article. Um, so straight straight away, I just want to mention B12, mainly found in eggs, dairy products, meat and fish. There's a reason for that. Uh, B12 is actually found in... It's a bacteria that, grow, it, that lives in dirt, soil, basically. Um, the reason vegans don't eat much of it is because... We sterilize everything. We obsessively clean and sterilize everything in our houses, and and especially when it comes to food, to the point where any bacteria that was on it from the outside is lost. So we don't get much B12. If you have your own garden, you grow your own things, then it might be you're getting a a good dose of B12 um, if you're not detolling the shit out of your potatoes before you eat them. Um, But, and you know, in nature, that's because we would be eating plant matter we'd be eating fruits and vegetables and tubers and seeds and nuts from outside and they'd be contaminated with the b12 uh, and we'd eat it and everything will, everything would be a great time um the only reason that people who eat meat and dairy and eggs uh, find themselves not b12 deficient is because it is also fed to those animals as a supplement uh these great big barrels of b12 and they pour it into their food and, and they eat that uh, they don't eat it naturally because they don't eat natural food they eat, um food that's been grown and processed for them um so that's generally why vegans are the ones who are singled out as possibly being b12 deficient it's very easy to get supplements or uh i, th- I think vegan energy vita powder um i think it's about 92 percent of your rda in a tablespoon i think don't quote me on that um so yeah that's that's the b12 thing meat eaters aren't getting it naturally either they're getting it in supplements uh they're just having their supplement pass through a cow first before it gets to them um on to this article. Um, the reason I'm talking about it, and like I say, it's it's a bit of a weak article. There's, there's going to be, what, two, 250 words? It's not long. Um, and it doesn't really say anything. It's a swing at veganism because it mentions here about uh, wholly raw vegan diets. It also goes into mentioning the B12 deficiency, which is something vegans suffer, uh, strict vegans. So it's kind, of a, it's kind of a swing at veganism, but it's what I'm starting to basically refer to as tag bait it's the sort of article that someone who is not a vegan will tag it and go tag a vegan and go hey, look check this out you're a depressed mother um and the reason things like this bother me is because it the article doesn't really say anything um it doesn't have any real journalistic merit um and yet i know several people um vegans who've had this uh sent to them by people just having a bit of a laugh kind of pointing and going ah you're a um as mates do uh, and i've had some people who have this brought up in serious conversation with family and friends uh who say this is why you shouldn't be vegan because you're you're killing yourself you're not getting your b12 um there's no research there it's unfounded um it's the sort of thing that can be used to make someone feel very small or provoke arguments online um and i know unpleasant like myself are quite happy to wade in and have an argument with someone but a lot of people just want to live their life as a vegan they don't want to be hounded every time uh, an article comes up and they don't want to have it shared and sent their way um it's also problematic because linking mental health to something is always a very risky business i know it's fairly risky me wading into doing mental health now as it is but um looking at this situation the 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 takeaway article if you only skim this is that people are making themselves mentally ill by forcing a vegan diet upon themselves uh, or, an, or a restrictive diet upon themselves um, and that's very dangerous I mean there is 
ignoring the scientific evidence that eating the right kind of fully nutritionally balanced diet uh, is good for your mental health, which um, you can find on the Keep a Vegan website. I've got that reference there. Um, it is also... It is also taking what is a very serious moral commitment for some people, um, a very serious uh, social commitment, uh, and boiling it down to, well, you're, you're ill, you're mentally ill, you're doing something that is something a mentally ill person would do, which is pretty um, pretty obscene, actually. Um, it's very uninformed and it's very unpleasant. I mean, here this, this line here bothers me. It was as if she preferred to lose her sight than betray her commitment to the animals. Um... I mean, first off, B12 is is achievable without harming any animals. Um, but that's a very kind of offhanded, very offhanded quote. And I'm going to say quote because, as you can see here, there's been a bit redacted from the uh, from the quote from Ortega. Uh, I'm not going to follow it through because I don't care that much. Um, because I'm looking at what the Independent is showing, not what Ortega has said. This is a criticism on the Independent. Um, that's the quote they have put forward. That's the quote they are they are saying is representative of what Ortega has said in this interview or press statement or whatever the f*** it is supposed to be. Um, and yeah, the issue here is that the the inference is that you're you're mentally ill for doing something like having a commitment to animals. You don't want to don't want to hurt them. You don't want your existence to be a part of their suffering. Uh, especially unnecessarily. Um, I know a number of uh, people who have found that going vegan has helped their, their their mental health. They feel better in and of themselves, people with, with prior um, mental health issues. I also know some people who it has not helped. So um, it's not to say that veganism will, will cure your mental health problems. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But to, to throw this article around in such a short form blog post esque way, and this is definitely one of the the independence hit and run style blog post articles, which goes up and hits social media to get shared rapidly. Um, it's frustrating because it gets shared around and it affects people. You see people on, uh, especially Facebook's a, a big place to spot this. People kind of sharing in in vegan groups how upset this made them because someone's tagged them in it and it's bullshit but they can't explain why it's bullshit or they're they they don't want to to get into a fight uh, or an argument or a debate about it um it's problematic um it's very clearly riding on a bit of a vegan hashtag popularity um but yeah, this it's, uh, it's frustrating. It's it's frustrating to see. There's a lot of articles coming up like this. Independent can be quite bad for it. Um, and really, all it's saying is there's a there's a mental health condition which is where people ruin their lives by imposing rules on themselves. But um, really, I just wanted to have a quick chat about why this article is bad. Why it's not fair to to key these things in with mental health. Um, in this way, and I just want to to really reiterate, just in case there's any any doubt or, or confusion, um, humans are not supposed to eat meat or dairy. Uh, we're the only species to eat uh, to consume dairy after weaning. Uh, we are the only species to consume uh, the milk, the uh, the secretions of another mammal, a different species, uh, because that's disgusting. Uh, they contain. That milk contains basically a combination of fertilizers designed to make cows into big cows. It is not for people. That's why we're seeing um, kids' puberty and, and man boobs on, on small boys and just a, a number of really unpleasant, rapid developments in uh, in the health of especially young people. Um, we're not supposed to eat meat. We have no adaptations for eating meat. We are herbivores through and through. You can check out the work of Dr. Milton Mills um all linked on the website you can also find my talk that i gave at whole vegan fair that's on the on the youtube channel as well so you can have a look at that about why we are the apex gatherer um we're not supposed to eat meat we're not supposed to eat dairy we are our our perfect ideal health will come from eating a whole food plant-based diet um so saying that people are making themselves sick or ruining their lives by putting these rules on themselves these this kind of vegan menta mentality on their on their lifestyle uh, is wrong. Um, you will get your best health if you're eating whole food plant-based. Obviously, you can be vegan and unhealthy. Uh, the same way you can be non-vegan and healthier than a uh, than some non-vegans. But your best health will come from eating what your body's supposed to eat. That's why 
uh, vegans tend to be healthier. Um, and yeah, just um, if you are one of those people that shares this article around or you do genuinely think that the veganism is a, a precursor to a mental illness or it's a sign of mental illness or um, you think that somebody is socially harming themselves because of what they're doing, you may be part of the problem. It's not necessarily about whether that person is vegan. Um, it may be that you can't handle the fact that somebody is vegan. Uh, maybe you don't like the moral aspect, you don't like that someone else is uh, is calling out morals that you're quite happy to uh, to ignore. Uh, they're calling out suffering, calling out pain that you're quite happy to, to ignore, or uh, you've not even really thought about all that much. You're worried about your uh, your sense of ethics being called into question. But it's um, it's really important when you see articles like this, just let them die. Just don't give them the oxygen of publicity. Don't share them. It's uh, it's difficult enough being a vegan around people who aren't vegan. Um, even the ones who don't cause you any grief are problematic because they will still eat non-vegan food around you. They will still consume animals. Um, they will order meat and dairy and cheese and, and so on uh, when you're all out for dinner and it is really, really difficult sitting next to someone who's uh, who's eating that shit because it's a direct violation of everything you hold dear to yourself and everything that makes sense in the world to you. Um, if you are then going out of your way to call out veganism and share articles like this or just claim that... I don't know. Don't be a d I guess is what I'm saying. Just don't... Just don't be a d Don't make life difficult for each other. Don't make life difficult for yourself. Just... Be good. Be normal. Be nice. That's all I'm asking. Uh, so yeah, very unstructured. No script for this one. No plan for this one. No research for this one. Um, this is really... I just wanted to, to kind of record my thoughts on this one. What's wrong with it? Um, and articles like it. Um, and yeah, just really uh, kind of go over the problem. Um, as always, you can find the science and the research and all that nonsense on the website www.keepervegan.com uh, subscribe here on the YouTube channel uh, feel free to leave a comment down below um, not necessarily about this video just leave a comment about something you like let me know what your favourite food is I don't know I'm too tired of this shit. and as always save the planet save the animals save yourself go vegan uh, and yeah, if you um if you do like what I do here, if you if you believe in my mission, uh, if you want to help me support me in getting this uh, education out to people, then you can uh, head over to the Patreon and um, throw a couple bucks my way. Am I really going to do an end plate for this one? I mean, it's already there's no video for this one. There's nothing to go in the end plate. Oh, it's whatever. I'll just find a distracting picture and put that in there.